Hey guys, my name is Aaron and this channel is Dad.0. Oh. So a couple weeks back, I came out with my long-term quote-unquote review of the Apple MacBook Air M1 base model. And if you're interested in seeing it, I'll put a link in the upper right-hand corner. But in a nutshell, this has been my favorite laptop to use basically ever. And what it really boils down to is the combination of speed, power, and a fanless thin and light design. Now a lot of you commented on that video asking me, is the base model going to be enough for my usage? Is the 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs going to be enough or should I bump up? And I received so many questions about this that I realized this is a hot topic so I wanted to address it and see if I can help you decide whether the base model MacBook Air M1 is going to be enough for your needs or if you should bump up to a higher spec out MacBook Air or go MacBook Pro. And as much as I'd like to, I can't tell every single person whether the base model is going to be enough for you because it really depends on how you use your computer. But what I plan to do is just tell you how I use the MacBook Air and how it's performed for me. And you can kind of take my experience and apply it to how you're going to use it. And hopefully that'll help you decide whether this is enough for you. And I just want to preface this by saying that I know that most of you are not video editors or content creators, and I'm going to mention video editing a lot in here, but I'm only doing that because video editing software and content creation software are typically large and demanding software. So that'll just kind of give you a base for how this will perform if you're using similar large and demanding software or programs. So just a little background, I picked this up when it was released, so I've been using it for a few months now. And I use it for professional reasons. I use it to not only edit all my videos and upload them to YouTube for this channel, but I also have a full-time job and I work from home and I use this computer for that as well. And when I'm done with the workday, I like to use this for personal reasons. That's web browsing, watching videos, watching YouTube, sometimes playing games and that sort of thing. So I use this computer a lot throughout the day and in many different types of tasks. So hopefully with the experience I have, it'll fit into one of the categories for how you intend to use this. Okay, let's talk about the performance of the M1 chip. And I'm going to say for most people out there, the vast majority, this is going to be plenty powerful enough for most use case scenarios. And you probably have seen the Geekbench scores of this. So you know that this thing is extremely fast. But not only that, it has very fast boot up times. The power management is excellent. You get great battery life that I'll get to more in a second. It also does really well at heat management. So much so that there's no fan on this MacBook Air. And honestly, I have pushed this thing and I haven't gotten it to a point where it gets hot. I'm extremely impressed with it. When it comes to RAM, this was something that I was a little bit nervous about getting only the 8 gigs because I did plan on using this for a lot of multitasking and multitasking with some heavy software like Final Cut Pro, the Adobe Creative Suite like Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator along with other programs, so I was a little bit nervous about this, but my feeling was that I would give the eight gigs a try, and if it didn't work out, I would just return it and bump up to 16. But actually, to my surprise, the eight gigs of RAM has held up tremendously. Now, there has been a few times where I've gotten pop-ups saying that I'm doing too much or I'm running out of memory and I'd have to close a program. That's typically when I'm doing a lot of edits with 4K footage on Final Cut Pro, along with having five to six other programs open, but that has been few and far between. And when I'm not in Final Cut Pro, I've experienced no issues with multitasking or slowdowns. I could have 50 tabs open in Chrome, while having 10 to 12 other programs running in the background and this thing stays very smooth, very fluid, and I've experienced no lag or crashing. So I think, again, for the majority of people, 8 gigs of RAM is going to be just fine for your needs. And if you're worried about it, maybe you're going to be running some very heavy programs all at the same time. You can do what I did and start out with the 8 gig model, and if it doesn't work out for you, then you can always bump up. Now for the 256 gig SSD, again, that's pretty small by today's standards. And with the amount of videos that we're taking with our phones these days and uploading to our computers, the high resolution photos, the programs that we're putting on these computers, that can get used up pretty fast. But again, this all comes down to how you're going to use this. If you're not planning on keeping a lot of 4K videos on your computer or thousands and thousands of pictures, and you're not going to be using a ton of really heavy programs, then 256 gigs 
might be enough for you. I'm thinking students here, people that want to use this just for recreation and personal use, and even some professionals that don't really need large programs on their computer. And the nice thing is you can always get an iCloud storage plan if you do run out, or you can get an external hard drive to keep things on. So there's always that option. And that's what I do personally. When I'm done with a project, I'll save it to an external hard drive or to my iCloud storage account. And then I don't save a lot of photos or videos. I stream everything. I don't store any movies or TV shows on my computer. So I'm able to get by with that 256 gigs, even as a video editor. Now the other subtle difference is that the base model MacBook Air has a seven core GPU instead of an eight. Now I haven't used the new MacBook Pros or a higher spec'd out MacBook Air, but I'm guessing this doesn't make a huge difference because when I play games, which isn't often, but they run just fine on this computer, now I'm talking very basic gaming from the App Store. If you're into a little bit more intensive gaming, maybe that one more core will make a difference for you. When I plug it into an external display, I can run multiple 4K videos streaming at the same time. I am able to edit 4K footage with no lag or stuttering going on, and it exports nice and fast. So I think, again, for the vast majority of people, they're not going to notice a difference between the 7-core GPU and the 8. So like I said, I can run a bunch of different programs. I can have Safari going with 10, 20, sometimes even more tabs than that. I'll have an email app going. I'll have my messages app open and responding to messages. I'll have Final Cut Pro running at the same time, sometimes Photoshop as well. I'll be on Slack throughout the day for my full-time job, and then I'll open and close other apps as I go along. And again, I've experienced no slowdowns, no lag, no crashing. Everything runs perfectly, really speedy, and again, this is why it's my favorite laptop to use. Now, I'll be using those programs for eight plus hours a day, and then when I'm done with work, I'll spend some time doing some web surfing, and after I get my daughter to bed, I'll even stream some content. I'll stream YouTube TV or Netflix, maybe watch some YouTube videos or even play some games, and I can do that all on one charge. I can get 10, 11, sometimes 12 plus hours depending upon if I'm doing video editing or not. And what I love is that even though I do push this with, you know, 4K edits and Photoshop and a bunch of different programs going at the same time, this thing is dead silent. There's no noise going on whatsoever. There's no fan going and it stays really cool. In fact, I'm editing this video right now on the MacBook Air and it's cool, almost cold to the touch. In terms of thermal throttling, I personally haven't run into that issue, and that's even while I'm exporting 4K footage. Now, I'm not going to say it doesn't happen at all because I've seen other reviewers comment that it does, but in my experience, it takes a lot for this to thermal throttle, and even when it does, the computer still stays pretty speedy. So what this all boils down to is that, in my opinion, for the vast majority of people out there, the base model is more than enough for what most people are going to be doing with this laptop. Now again, there are some exceptions out there, but I feel like those people already know who they are because they've been using higher spec out computers for most of their life. So they know that they need more than 8 gigs of RAM or more than 256 gigs of SSD already. But again, hopefully you can take my experience with this MacBook Air M1 base model and apply it to how you're going to use it. And I think that for most people, you'll be more than impressed with the speed and performance that you'll get from this machine. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. I hope this video was helpful. If you like this video, make sure you press that like button. Also consider subscribing. I really appreciate that, guys. And like always, I'll catch you on the next video.